And now I would like to hand it over to Samuel Bohn, CEO of our Swiss Contact Foundation. Now I have to unmute. Thank you, Esther, for the introduction. A very warm welcome to all of you, uh, dear experts. It's nice to see you all. Uh, a very warm welcome also to our regional coordinators uh, from around the globe that uh, support our missions of the SEC. And I also welcome any guests and friends of Swiss Contact to this event. Um, these are indeed very extraordinary times. Uh, such a global pandemic is something very uh, unusual for us. And uh, it puts a lot of challenges in front of us. One was obviously to organize this uh, annual event. But we also see that in spite of the challenges that we're facing currently around the globe, uh, that this crisis also bears new opportunities for us Proof is this meeting that takes place online. Uh, it does not hamper us from gathering and sharing information. Uh, it also allows uh, our coordinators from around the globe to join us in this meeting without having to travel um, uh, far. So a warm welcome again, and also thank you to our team, the, the senior expert contact team, for uh, making a huge effort to bring us together uh, in this format. It is obviously regrettable that we cannot meet and it is also regrettable that we cannot make all our missions um, that we planned this year for the experts to go into the field. But uh, in spite of the difficulties uh, before the, the global shutdown uh, due to COVID-19, we could run uh, almost 40 uh, SEC missions in the field that were successfully concluded. And then our team worked very hard to see and pilot and test online assignments. Uh, and actually, um, we have close to 30 such assignments ongoing. Three uh, were now already completed and we still have um, 27 such assignments that are currently ongoing. And I think this is a very important learning that we're doing, our team, to see how can we also in the future have blended um, models to uh, run missions on the spot, but also remotely. Uh, so this is an important learning, and I thank all the experts that were willing and capable to uh, run their missions uh, online, and also to our team that uh, enabled them to do so. Uh, today you will speak about uh, sustainability or sustainability criteria, in particular two of them, uh, climate-related questions and questions of gender. And I think it's a good time to think about sustainability. Uh, these topics were, by the way, chosen before the COVID crisis, but I think they remain very, very relevant, in particular in these times that we think about what is the relevance of our work and what can we still do uh, in such times when, in particular, international travel is no longer possible. It goes without saying that the work that, in particular, you experts do um, is a work that has the highest impact when we are on the ground, face to face with our clients, and when we can really guide them, accompany them, and, and have the whole understanding of the local situation more than just a video image. Uh, but in spite of that, I think we can still do a lot uh, also this way, because one of the fundaments of our work is the transfer of knowledge and know-how. And that transfer can also happen uh, via such Zoom calls. So uh, this being said, sustainability topics are relevant. What you are doing is highly relevant. And in this spirit, I wish you all a successful event today, an insightful event, hopefully, a rewarding event. And with this, I wish you a, a joyful time uh, all together here in Zoom. And with this, I hand over to Benjamin Long, who is our Director of Global Programs, uh, under which also the SEC is managed. Thank you very much, and I wish you a good day. Thank you, Samuel. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon and good early morning. Um, I'm very happy to welcome you all to this annual event 2020. 
which is, uh, as Samuel already strengthened, is quite uh, different, different circumstances, new techniques and new methods. And that's why we created this year a uh, virtual space. Of course, it's not the same if we would uh, be sitting together in, the, in a large hall. Nevertheless, it makes it also possible to get in contact this way. I will very briefly uh, introduce uh, myself. My, my name is Benjamin Lang, and as uh, Samuel said, I'm the director of global programs at Swiss Contact. Global programs at our organization are per definition those programs that are led out of Switzerland. So the project management, program management is sitting in Switzerland. They are total six program at the moment uh, like this and one of them and the most uh, the one that uh, the oldest let's say the most uh, experienced one is uh, SHC. Hmm? Um, I will serve today as a moderator of this event and th therefore I would like to begin uh, thanking to all of you all experts that are present it's due to you, uh, voluntary work, your willingness and uh, to share your knowledge and the time you dedicate to uh, the SHC uh, and to your assignments. Thanks also on behalf of Swiss Contact, on behalf of the senior expert and all the SHC clients, of course, which are not present today, but which you uh, in your uh, quality of experts know very well. And of course, I also would like to thank uh, the SHC's employees, most of them you know, and who are also participating in our event today. Huh? I will start with Nicole Luis, who has been at SHC the longest and is responsible for Nepal, Mongolia and Benin. Morning. Share, yeah, okay, <laughs> thank you, Nicole. <laughs> then uh, Mira Fricker, who is back from her maternity leave since April and who is responsible for the assignments uh, in Latin America. Hello. Hello, Mira. Then Amila Basic, as temporary employee since last year and currently filling uh, in for Esther Gasser. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> And last but not least, Esther Gasser, Jane Ackermann's maternity replacement and responsible for East, Eastern Europe and Cambodia. Good morning, hello. <laughs> uh, Jane uh, Ackermann, the program manager, as is, as you know, at mat on maternity leave until uh, end of the year, but she sends her regards to everyone as well. So now I will share my screen and uh, we can go briefly uh, first to the agenda of this morning. Oh, sorry. This was too quick. First I have to share. Huh? Where is this sharing issue? Share here. So now we all see the agenda. I hope so. So we already had um, Esther's and Samuel's um, participation, the welcome notes. In a first part, I will lead you through the facts and figures uh, of last year, 2019, our current status and an outlook. Then, as uh, Samuel already announced, we will have the participation of two colleagues, uh, of two topical specialists within our uh, Swiss contact team, first on gender equality, Alessandra Pellegrini, and afterwards on environmental responsibility, our colleague Christina Grünewald. Afterwards, um, we will come to what I would uh, call maybe the core of this um, meeting, which is the in exchange of experience among 
uh, you as a experts, mainly on the topic of remote assignments, huh, which is a new experience for for all of you, I think, or most of you. And uh, we would really invite you there to exchange lively uh, on on positive and also maybe negative experiences, which is very important for us to know about this. And shortly after concluding, I will give a short um, information on the, what we call the SAC Guatemala, which is uh, our uh, small projects, which is um, which we implement since last year about establishing a local expert organization and maybe about also to talk about the relevance of this model for the future of the senior expert contact as such. And we hope to conclude at uh, the event on 12 sharp, 12 a, uh, p.m. a.m. sharp uh, uh, Central European time. So, I have to follow here the script. Esther has done a very, very good work on that, but uh -huh. great. You see, we go now to um, the review uh, 2019. We have, will have, um, we're looking back to a very intense and exciting year at the senior expert contact. First of all, Sorry, I go back to the, here is the presentation mode, sorry. Um, as you all know, in 2019, uh, the SHC celebrated its 40th anniversary. And um, just to, to remind about these four decades, uh, we made uh, quite an extensive study and saw that uh, our SHC experts in these 40 years carried out over 3,000 assignments, which translates to around 1.2 million hours of voluntary work, which is really an ex uh, impressive figure. I was very, um, it was very interesting and instructive for all of us to take a look at our past and to learn from it as well as to share these insights and to celebrate with you. Many of you surely uh, were uh, present at last year's celebration, which was fortunately not a virtual, but a face-to-face -face event. In 2019, also the Swiss Contact Foundation itself has celebrated an anniversary. It was our 60th anniversary. There was also something very new, huh? senior expert contact. So another milestone in this anniversary year was the name change from senior expert corp to senior expert contact. We think that with this slide adaptation, the abbreviation SIC remained the same, but the somewhat outdated terms corps was replaced. The new logo as well as the new descriptive claim potential meets experience was also part of the SEC rebranding. So now let's have a look at the realized SEC assignments by country uh, in 2019. Um, the total of assignments was uh, 127 in a total of 21 countries. And I think it's not the first time that uh, most of the assignments were carried out in Nepal. As you see here, this red, red line in the uh, lower part of the slide, 45 uh, assignments in total in Nepal in 2019 followed by Cambodia, 14, and Kosovo, 11 assignments. The remaining assignments were spread across the SIC, the SIC focus countries as well as various other countries. You see them all listed from Albania, 
down to Uganda. Let's have a look at the distribution of the SEC assignments per region. Here we have it. We see that roughly two thirds, a bit more than half, let's say, 67, took place in Asia, 20 of them in Latin America, 18 in Eastern Europe, 16 in North and West Africa, and six in the East Africa region, the yellow part of the cake. And then another interesting uh, statistics is also on the assignments by industry. This gives a really interesting picture as well. And as far as I remember, it's not, it's, it's uh, somehow a repetition of other years. It also reflects, I think, the speciality of few SSA experts that we have in our database. So we have three main parts of the cake here with 30, 30 and 29, which is um, the food industry, the tourism industry and 29 expert assignments uh, as advisor role in the education sector. It was followed by 11 in agriculture and then a wide range of smaller amount of assignments in other sectors. In total, let me see, I haven't counted, but we have roughly 20 sectors that were, 20 industries that were um, covered last year. But now let's come to this year where things, as you all know, are a bit different. So let's talk about the current status and the outlook. Huh? Due to the crisis caused by the corona pandemic, um, as it's its main project activities, which is sending experts abroad to support our clients uh, in partner countries, have come at the end or mid-March already to an abrupt halt. All at once, we had to find other solutions. And so the remote assignments were developed and implemented. Here we have an impression of what uh, are the remote assignments. Huh? We see here some of these people are present in the, in the actual call. So you see yourself here. This is uh, a current situation of such a remote assignment, a meeting, a follow-up meeting uh, in the frame of a remote SAC assignment. So what are the goals of these remote, remote assign assignments? Hmm? Of course, it is to continue to support our clients in these speci uh, specially difficult times, despite of the worldwide travel restrictions. With experts advice through remote assignment and to adapt the content to their needs. Hmm? So it's a continuation of your, uh, of your uh, current work by other means somehow. Huh? In order to evaluate the results of these remote assignments, we have developed a clear process as well as a documentation. These assignments are closely monitored by our uh, SHA head office. The reason why you saw in the picture before uh, Nico Luis being part of this follow-up call. Huh? So that qualitative and quantitative client data can be collected early on the assignment. The, so far, huh, the, the remote assignments show that the SHC really can perform its duties even in exceptional times. Remote assignments have quickly established themselves as a new product and are showing initial success. 
So this is the current status. Um, Samuel Bohn at the beginning, beginning already um, made a hint on this, that. Huh? So since March, until March, sorry, until March, we could carry out 29 assignments on site. Huh? So this was previous to the worldwide travel ban. And then between April and May, we used the time for preparatory work, for example, training uh, on the use of the virtual platforms in MS Teams and Zoom. Huh? As many of you, but not all of you have been familiar with these tools and frankly speaking also with our within our Swiss contact organization quite some people had to get more familiar with these tools so one is to know the tool and then one the other one another pair of shoe is using it regularly the first remote assignments started in early June and as uh, was mentioned before, three of them could already be completed. And we have currently about around 27 ongoing remote assignments conducted by 26 experts. So this also shows one of the big advantages. Not we, we don't, we have to see the advantages also, huh? And one of them is that theoretically also an expert can cover more than one assignment at the same time, which reflects here we have 27 or even 30 uh, remote assignments conducted by 27 experts. So see, we have some cases and maybe even uh, uh, some of these experts are present and can share then their experience, what it means to be part of two assignments, uh, remote assignments at the same time. Would be very interesting to hear about that. The remote assignments take place uh, in a time frame between six and 12 weeks. And during this time, as you, as you saw in the picture before, both um, all parts are work working very closely together. This increases both commitment and efficiency and problem can be identified and resolve, resolve within a very, at an early stage. Even though remote assignments are not suitable for all small and medium enterprises, we have seen that there are still many areas which can be served in this way. For example, in human resources, business management, the textile industry, marketing and sales, architecture, and even in the hotel industry. Let's have a short outlook what it means, what, how we will go um, about in the future. We think that the remote assignments have established themselves as a new product within a relatively short time. And therefore, as we, th we think that online is here to stay, which means that we will continue these rem remote assignments in addition to on-site assignments. Of course, this only in the case that one, when one's travel is possible again. Thus, we can say as a result of the crisis that SSA is now able to offer a new product. The remote assignment, of course, cannot replace uh, on-site assignments. We are all aware of that. And we hope, of course, that we uh, in the future can again uh, uh, carry out such on-site assignment, but only as soon as we can guarantee the safety of our experts, of you, our experts, and that you can, you are able to travel to the clients with very few restrictions. So I stop sharing the screen.
no. Aha, here is it. I have to stop that. Huh? How is the stop of the sharing? Here, uh -huh. this nice button there. So we come now to the next topic and I would like to hand over to Alessandra Pellegrini gender advisor at Swiss contact. She we, she's here to discuss the question gender equality in 200 years. So you see, we have a long-term perspective at the senior expert contact. Thank you, Benjamin, and uh, welcome also to everyone to this uh, annual event of the SEC. A warm welcome from my side. It's a bit a special annual event. Uh, because it's virtual. So um, actually I want to start my uh, part, my contribution at this event with a small interactive part. We will start um, directly with a small quiz before I will then talk about what gender equality means for Swiss Contact and how we approach it. So I will launch now a small poll, a quiz, where I will read you through the um, different questions and you can try to answer them. It's really just guessing. It's a, a bit of fun, let's say, which throws us into the topic. So I will launch the poll. You will see it appears on your screen. So you can go through the questions and at the bottom of this small quiz, it has a button which says submit. So at the end, when you have answered the questions, you should press submit so that I see all the, the answers. This quiz is totally anonymous. I cannot see who answered what and it doesn't matter anyway. So it's really just to get a bit into the topic. So I will launch now this um, quiz. You should see it now on the screen. Um, if you cannot see it, then uh, you, you might um, raise your hand or just speak up. So the first question, how many years on average will it take to achieve gender equality worldwide without additional measures taken? Just have a guess. Is it 200 years, 100 years or 42 years? And um, actually, I should see here how many people are responding. So far, I cannot see if anyone has responded. Um, I think we we can meet Mark Alessandra. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Now I see people have responded. Okay. Now it it seems it works. Okay. Um, all those who are host or co-host cannot answer the questions, just the participants. So the second um, question, where does Switzerland rank in the global gender gap? Is it second place, place eight or place 18? Then the third question, how many projects of, benef of women, uh, how many percent, sorry, how many percent of women benefit on average from Swiss contact projects? So around 46%, 50 or 54%. I see people are responding. Then let's go to the fourth question. It's really just guessing. What percentage of SEC assignments in 2018 and 2019 were conducted by men? What do you think? Half of them, more or less, 65%, or a big majority of 85%. Then the last question, what percentage of companies that benefit from SEC assignments were led by women? What do you think? Just 28%, 44 or 57%? So I will give you some 10 seconds more time to, to put your guesses into it. When you finished, just click submit. And then I will end the polling. So last chances to fill in your guesses. 
I see there are still some answers coming in. Okay, so I will end the polling now and I will share the results with you. You should see it now on the screen. So <clears throat> those which are marked orange are actually the correct answers. So how many years will it take on average to achieve gender equality? This is based on a World Economic Forum report, which says that on average it will take 100 years which is based on analysis of 153 countries. It says on average because it is not in all areas the same. So in the area of economic equality, it will take about 202 years. In the area of political representation, 95 years. And in the area of education, only 12 years. So most people have guessed right. Then the next one, uh, the Switzerland's rank on gender, go uh, gender gap index. This is also correct. Most people have answered correctly. So we are on the 18th place. In the first place is Iceland, fo followed by Norway, Finland, Sweden, and then Nicaragua. And on sixth, uh, on rank six uh, is Rwanda. And I mentioned this uh, because Rwanda and Nicaragua are both um, Swiss contact countries, not necessarily uh, SEC countries, but Swiss contact countries. So they are um, among the top 10. And uh, we have Swiss contact projects in those countries. So in terms of gender equality, at least what is measured in this index, they are um, way ahead of Switzerland, we could say. Then um, the third question, how many person, percent of women benefit on average from Swiss contact projects? Yes, that's more or less half of them. So that's what we call actually benefit outreach. On the one hand, these are companies or smallholder households, so farms actually run by women. And on the other hand, these are women who receive also vocational training through our project. And then we are on the fourth question. This is also correct. It's 85% of assignments have been conducted by men between uh, 2018 and 2019. This of course has different reasons. And also the last question regarding the companies that benefited from SEC assignments led by women, these were also and 28%. So actually all guesses, <laughs> the majority guessed all of the questions correctly. So as you see in the last two questions, there are some challenges to reach gender equality within SEC. Um, but we are working, of course, hard on it. And we have also set some goals in our new strategy, which I will mention at the end of my presentation. So I will now stop sharing the results. And I will share my screen now to start with the, um, with the presentation. Oops, and um, sorry, that was the wrong one. Sorry, um, I wanted to click another button and so now I have chosen the right one. Okay. So, as we have seen in the quiz, we have uh, looked at different questions actually. So we have talked about the question, how many years will we reach gender equality? So this means that we talked in essence about different starting positions of women and men based on norms. We have also talked about how many women benefit from Swiss contact projects. So this means that we have actually talked about um, different access to resources and services for women and men. We have also talked about how many female-led enterprises have benefited from uh, SEC assignments. So in the end, this means that we have talked actually about different possibilities for leadership and income generating opportunities. So through all these uh, kind of um, areas which we have touched up in, in the quiz, we talked about power inequalities and different access to opportunities. And this is all part of gender equality. Of course, gender equality has also other aspects that have not been mentioned um, explicitly in the quiz. So at Swiss Contact, actually, um, we recognize that gender equality means equal access to resources, 
This could be um, economic, social, cultural resources, equal access to assets, um, economic opportunities, and public or uh, political representation. It means also equal agency regarding decision-making power over income, time, workload, and leadership. It means obviously also equal rights regarding ownership, mobility, income, and political participation. And of course, we want to achieve a positive impact on gender norms, roles, institutions, on social recognition, on the reduction of violence, and on well-being. But why actually is JC, which means gender equality and social inclusion, as we call it here at Swiss Contact, actually, so why is gender equality and social inclusion important in the end? First, it is a sustainable development goal. So this means that it is a social responsibility and as such it is non-negotiable. Second, if we have an in-depth understanding of our target group, which is often very, very heterogeneous, very diverse. So if we have an, an understanding of our target group, a differentiated understanding. This leads also to more targeted in interventions. So if we know the motivations, interests, and needs of our target group better, we can also design our interventions better. And third, which is closely linked to the second point, is that targeted interventions lead to more effective project implementation and the achieving of results. So that's why it is really necessary to know also the different needs and interests and motivations of women and men in our projects or of female or male-led enterprises in the case of SEC. Now, having said this, gender is of course not the only dimension that leads to social inclusion or exclusion. There are various other uh, dimensions that lead to social exclusion too. So in Swiss contact, we see gender as an entry point, but it is not the only one that we want to tackle. Often social inclusion happens where various of these dimensions, which you see here on the screen, come together. So the report on gender equality of UN women from 2018, for example, highlights that a girl who is born into a poor household and forced into early marriage is more likely to drop out of school first, second, to give birth at an early age, to third, suffer complications during childbirth, and fourth, to experience violence, which are all SDG targets, actually. So this girl is more likely to experience all of this than a girl from a higher income household who marries at a later age. So we see here that the various of these dimensions, the socioeconomic status has a high impact also on, um, on, on, uh, on possibilities, on opportunities to being, to, to, to um, completing an education, to suffering from complication um, on childbirth, etc. So actually all these dimensions together have an impact on how access to opportunities and social exclusions are diminished or not. However, when we talk about gender, often uh, or many understand like, okay, we are talking about women, but that's not the case actually, because when we talk about gender, this is about talking the, about the relationship between women and men. So when we talk about gender, we need to talk about women as much as we talk about men. And also it is not just women that suffer from gender norms. It is also men who suffer in the end from gender norms. So there are studies from Promundo, for example, who say that men die more and earlier than women because of gender norms. And this is because gender norms lead often to riskier behavior for men, to having a less healthy lifestyle, and to being exposed to more occupational hazards than women. So this, in the end, leads actually to these statistical effects. At Swiss Contact, we approach the topic of gender at three different levels. Um, but first, perhaps, just to mention uh, gender equality and social inclusion is uh, now defined at Swiss Contact as a sustainability criteria 
which means that it is actually an important aspect of our project's quality and also of our organizational setup. So um, gender equality as a sustainability criteria, we look at it at three different levels. First, there is kind of the individual level. It is about gender um, staff sensitization and also self-reflection. And we have for each of these levels, we have some internal documents, uh, which I will just show um, a selection of them. We have various, but I just show the most important ones. So regarding this level of individual self-reflection, we have, for example, an e-learning module on gender sensitization. And we have also a guideline for gender equal communication. Then we tackle it also on the level of the institutional structures. So we have here also guidelines for family friendly working conditions for equal pay and diverse management team. This includes all uh, like looking at gender at institutional structures. So we have here our gender policy actually, which this one is not an internal document. This is public, which can be downloaded at our website. Then the third level, of course, is gender equality in our projects. And here it is on the one hand about mainstreaming gender in all components, which means that uh, we consider gender in all our activities and all our interventions that we do in a project and throughout all the whole uh, project cycle. And the second aspect of gender equality in projects is to having separate components for gender only, like a special and extra effort which is sometimes needed. This could be interventions targeted directly towards women mostly, it could also be targeted towards men, but often in most cases then these um, extra special affirmative activities are directed uh, particularly towards women. So here for this um, level of tackling gender and sustainability criteria, we have an internal guideline for projects. Now, as I have mentioned, sometimes we need an ex extra effort um, <clears throat> because, um, yeah, we need sometimes an ex a special effort to, to make actually equal access, for example, effectively happen. So as we see here on this image, three persons that we see here have different needs. So if they all receive the same measures, the same activities, it will not change the situation for all of them. For two of them, it will not change anything. So sometimes we need some measures of equity, as they are called, to reach actually equality. And these measures of equity are the, these special efforts that we sometimes need to make. And um, regarding these special efforts, I would like to now um, tell you an, an, an example of an SEC assignment which has been conducted in Cambodia with Charles of Clay, which is an SEC client. And Charles of Clay is a pastry bakery with homemade food. It is led by Mrs. Vijeka and has 100% women employees. So Charles of Clay is known for their quality cakes, home style cooking, for friendly customer service. And they have a mission to support vulnerable Cambodian women through skills development and sustainable employment. So they are actually known for providing a positive environment for employment of vulnerable Cambodian women. Charles of Clay requested an SEC assignment to revise the food menu because um, they are operating in a very competitive environment and they want to stay competitive. And they also requested an SEC assignment to improve their customer service skills, to improve the, the food preparation and presentation, the general operations management, and to ensure also that the business can thrive in this competitive market. The SEC assignment, um, which you can see here, the expert in the background, the SEC assignment could give the management and the team important information on how they could prepare their business so that it remains competitive in the next five to 10 years. This uh, expert could indicate what the niche of this cafe could actually be, what they need to communicate <clears throat> more extensively and what the causes of the problems actually are. So concretely, uh, the senior expert detected 
that jars of clay actually do not have a food quality problem, but rather a problem of facil facilities and space. So many of their facilities, the kitchen, the storage, the office and the restrooms are reaching the end of the life cycle. And he advised the um, enterprise to make investments into these facilities to strengthen also the core business in the communication so that they include, for example, in their communication uh, that they have a social commitment towards vulnerable Cambodian women and also to extend the management structure with day shift managers, which is um, yeah, just on the uh, management side. They were also advised to introduce home delivery, for example, which could be pushed by an app and to also introduce payment by credit card and mobile phone. So this SEC example is uh, exactly an example of a completely female-led enterprise, one of these 28% that we have uh, seen in the quiz. And <clears throat> accordingly, the SEC strategy aims also, has some aims as I have already mentioned regarding gender equality. So actually there are four aims in the new SEC strategy which, um, which um, tackle gender equality. So first, um, SEC aims at having a minimum of 50% of all clients that have women in their management team. That does not mean that they are female-led, but they have women in their management team. Then the second aim is that in average, the management teams of SEC clients must consist of a minimum of 33% uh, of women. <clears throat> Then the third aim is that among the SEC clients' employees, the balance should between men and women be more or less 50-50. And the fourth one is that SEC clients should whenever possible support or be encouraged to support the gender which is underrepresented among professions in the sectors. So <clears throat> with these extra efforts, we actually hope to achieve gender equality regarding economic opportunities in a bit less than 200 years. So I thank you very much for your um, attention. I will now stop sharing my screen. And I will now hand over to Christina. She is uh, Christina Grünewald. She is the environment advisor at Swiss Contact. And she will discuss some uh, new approaches to gen uh, not to gender, to, to environmental sustainability. <laughs> so welcome, Christina. Thank you very much, Alessandra. I will just uh, start sharing my screen. Social <laughs> video. Can you all see my screen now? Yes, perfect. So, um, hello to everyone. I'm very pleased to be here today to meet you all online and to give you a short introduction on the topic of environment and on environmental responsibility, how this is applied in Swiss contact and um, how this can be applied in SEC. I will start with a few um, facts and figures on environmental challenges that we face globally today. Um, pollution causes more than 4 million deaths per year and affects the health of over 100 million people. Half of the topsoil has been lost in the last 150 years. Topsoil is actually the, uh, the, um, the top part of the soil, which is most fertile and is necessary to grow plants. And it takes about 500 to 1000 years for one inch of topsoil to be produced naturally. Over 2 billion people currently experience severe water scarcity. And the use of water has been growing more than twice as fast as population has grown. That means that the situation will actually worsen in the future if we continue um, with the same practices. Climate change. 
A one meter sea level rise may eliminate entire small island nations and tens of million people may be displaced in Bangladesh, for example. Uh, other effects of climate change are um, increased intensity of storms, um, more floods because of erratic rainfall events and um, also increased drought events. Biodiversity, an estimated 80% of the original forest has been cleared, damaged or fragmented. Actually, in the news today, I heard that we lost two thirds of our wildlife biodiversity globally over the past 50 years. There is a plastic island in the middle of the North Pacific that is the size of India, Europe and Mexico combined. And roughly one third of the food produced in the world gets lost or wasted. So I'm sorry, if this is not a very cheerful introduction to the topic, but these are challenges that affect all of us globally. But the challenges are even more important when we work in a development context and um, when we work for poverty alleviation. Actually, economic development or all economic activities are, are based on the use of natural resources. We use material, natural material, like um, we use water um, and energy to produce um, and, and produce products or provide services. And then we also, with that, produce outputs that may be harmful on the environment. Uh, here you can see in the graph, you can see the, G, um, the CO2 emissions of low-income countries and uh, high-income countries. And this shows very clearly that if we do economic development with the current practices, so if we want to increase economic production of low-income countries, this will lead to more um, CO2 emissions. Therefore, it is very important that we um, start um, supporting sustainable and efficient use of resources by, uh, for example, introducing new technologies that are less harmful or um, better practices. Secondly, we have to consider that poor people suffer most from environmental degradation, pollution and climate change. Uh, this has different reasons. For example, poor people are often more exposed to, um, for example, pollution when they work in informal jobs where um, working conditions are not good, when they are, they are exposed to um, polluted air or to, to toxic materials, for example. Often poor people also live in areas that are more at risk, for example, informal settlements next to a waste dump. And then finally, of course, poor people don't have the means to, uh, to overcome difficulty situation. Like, for example, when there is a drought, um, they cannot just afford to buy water for consumption or irrigation. And therefore, it is, oh yeah. And here you can see um, that uh, also, most countries that are most at risk for climate change uh, negative impacts are mostly developing countries. You can see the countries in red and orange. So with this background, um, it's clear that we have to always think about building the resilience of people and building capacities to adapt to difficult situations and climate change. For example, when we work in, in agriculture, this could be about introducing uh, crop varieties that are more resistant to droughts. And then finally, um, it's important to consider that um, in developing contexts, 
environmental awareness is often lower or also not the first priority of people and that uh, often environmental management systems are not in place or not well functioning. This means if we um, pr produce, for example, waste or wastewater, this uh, may end up um, like on the pictures here um, and has actually a much worse effect than um, waste or wastewater in Switzerland or in a in, in, um, high-income country. And therefore, it's even more important to consider these aspects and to discuss actively with local partners and clients. Now, how do we uh, integrate environmental responsibility at Swiss Contact? Um, you can see it's a very similar situation as gender, and it's also considered a sustainability criterion and is integrated on, on different levels. On the institutional uh, level, we, it's, um, we have an environmental policy which gives the basic direction, what we want to do and where we want to go to. Uh, we also have concrete measures on institutional level, for example, last year, we measured the um, CO2 footprint of our head office in order to identify um, areas where we can improve. And on the project level, we have um, um, developed a set of tools that help projects to integrate the um, important topics. And the key tool is actually the environmental assessment, which is essential for project teams to understand the link between the, their activities and the environment and then to find the best measures to take to improve the situation. And then finally, awareness raising, we do that internally and um, we have a community and of practice discussing important issues we do webinars, um, but then also we want to raise awareness with our partners, especially with local partners, um, because in the end, when the project ends, um, it's our partners who will carry on the activities, and we, we try to make sure that um, they still use environmental friendly practices. Now, how can SEC apply environmental responsibility? Probably the first thing that com comes to your mind is the flights. Of course, um, the offer of SEC is based on flying. Experts have to visit their clients, their SMEs. But in the new strategy, SEC has actually um, set a goal of reducing flights um, by combining assignments. So um, the goal is to combine two to three assignments in, a, in the same region so that experts only have to do one long, uh, long distance flight and don't have to go back and forth. Um, and then the second thing is that all the CO2 emissions from flights are compensated as of this year. And last year we had a very interesting uh, little workshop with the coordinators and we um, brainstormed options to improve environmental responsibility. And one thing that came out as crucial was that um, the importance of the topic needs to be highlighted um, towards all different parties, so with new experts, but also with partner SMEs, because it's often this very important first step to bring the topic actually on the radar and, and to, to have it considered during the assignment. And also in the report that experts write in the end, there is a section on environmental issues, um, which also helps to to highlight this importance. And secondly, one idea was to more actively look for SMEs or partners who actually uh, 
have environmentally friendly practices or even work in a, have a green business so to support such good initiatives or then also find uh, SMEs that are willing to improve the practices, so explicitly um, discuss with them what can be done. And then finally, um, it's important to highlight the good practice examples, um, of course, to inspire others, but also to learn from, from their experiences. And now I would like to talk about such an example. It is um, in the context of fish farming in Vena. And actually it's a, about the SEC assignment that uh, just started. And I think Adrian Pierce is not here today, but um, yes, he is very much involved. So here you can see where Benin is placed. It's in Western Africa between Togo and Nigeria. And these are some impressions about the context. Um, so uh, the place is called Toho Lagoon. It's uh, the biggest fish production of Benin. And here you can see different techniques for fish farming. Uh, in, on the bottom, it's an old traditional way where they uh, farm in the open water. And then on the top, you can see on the left, a pond that is beside the, uh, the lagoon and then on the right the more modern equipment that only a few fish farmers actually use. And then you can see that the farming, the breeding is actually mostly done by men and women are more um, responsible for the processing and selling. On the left you can see this uh, a modern, more or less modern smoking machine Actually, most of the women smoke their fish um, uh, on the open fire. Now, um, we have a project, this contact have, has a project in the area and which aims to increase income of fish farmers. And when we started, when uh, the planning of the project started, um, three key problems were identified. The first was the, uh, that productivity was low due to inefficient fish breeding techniques. Secondly, there was limited access to good quality fish feed because the quality fish feed is actually imported and therefore very expensive. So um, fish farmers um, produce their own fish feed, which is less productive the fish grow um, not as fast as they could with good quality food. And thirdly, there is a lack of modern and efficient smoking equipment. Um, the smoking is actually important because uh, it allows uh, farmers to store their fish uh, for a longer time so they don't have to sell everything at the same day but they have more flexibility and therefore also um, get better prices on the market. Now, when we talked about this context, we quickly realized that we have to really look at the environmental context here as well. Um, because the lagoon is a highly vulnerable ecosystem and there is a lot of human pressure um, from human activities, like from tourism and agriculture, but also from fish farming. So when we look more closely into the environmental impacts of fish farming, the most important uh, impacts were pollution through inadequate breeding practices, because breeding in the open water actually means that all the inputs, so all the fish feed they put in, that goes to the open water and pollutes the whole, and can pollute the whole um, water body. So the whole ecosystem is affected. And then pollu pollution through homemade fish feed. Um, this is because the homemade fish feed is actually too heavy. So it sinks very fast to the bottom and the fish like to eat on the top, which means that 
they can only eat a small part of the, the feed that is thrown in. And the rest just stays at the bottom. And this is all organic material that um, actually pollutes the water and changes the whole ecosystem. And then of course, the water pollution in turn has a negative effect on productivity. So our burning question then was, uh, when we intervene there, intervene there, if our project increases fish production, does that lead to additional environmental damage? Or in that case, even <coughs> to the collapse of the ecosystem? So we knew that we had to find out um, what the current state of the lagoon ecosystem is. So we need to know the water quality uh, today. And then we have to find out how we can produce more fish and at the same time reduce the negative impact on the environment. So the project team actually talked to a lot of people, especially to their main partner, which is the Fishing Association, a small SME, a local SME. But nobody really had the information. There was no data available. And then we had the brilliant idea to get in contact with SEC. And we found actually a fish expert um, who did already several assignments for us and who now um, is currently helping the Fisheries Association to measure and analyze the water quality parameters. And then based on the, on the findings, um, give recommendations regarding breeding techniques and feeding practices, which then at the same time, time um, hopefully can improve productivity and um, uh, decrease the environmental impact. So in the end, we have uh, the outcome will be increased production and income and environmental health. So oh, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, I look forward to many more good examples coming in the next years. Thank you. Now we come to the last item on the agenda for our annual event. And for this, I'll hand it over to Benjamin Lang again. Uh, thank you very much, Esther. Um, well, the, we are already at our last agenda point, which is about the SEC project in Guatemala, um, which we started, uh, uh, as I mentioned, with the financing from Orgidius Foundation uh, back in July 2019. I will now sh share my screen again. Let me see, share screen, here we are. Sorry, does it open? Yeah, now. So um, this is the senior expert services in Guatemala. And um, I'm happy to see that also our coordinator in Guatemala, Philip is with us. He was, he stood up very early to join us in this call. Thank you, Philip. So as I said, the project is supported by Orgidius Foundation. And um, just to say in the core of the project, um, the goal is uh, to establish a local organization which arranges consultancies by local and international volunteers in SMEs, following somehow the model of the Swiss, Swiss contact senior expert contact. The personal setup of the project, uh, we can really say it's very light, it's very slim. Huh? It's the local coordinator, Philip, uh, who is joining this call, as I said. And a, a part of that, we have a part-time monitoring expert. 
um, administrative services are rendered by our Swiss contact office in Guatemala. And the strategy of the project consists uh, of four main activities. Uh, I will now uh, make them um, visible one by one and you will see the in yellow uh, the achievement so far. So, as I said here, this is the goal. I already mentioned it. So, the first, the first topic was, the first challenge, I could also say, was uh, to um, recruit, identify, convince, recruit sufficient local volunteering senior experts. Um, mostly these are economically still active senior professionals which are motivated to help small and medium enterprises. So far, um, at the moment where this um, presentation was elaborated, uh, we, we count on 34 local volunteers already. Then, of course, the second part is uh, to make known the services among potential clients. They're representing organizations and also potential experts. Uh, to this topic, the project was continuously promoted through various channels. Uh, here we have been, uh, uh, Philip locally has been um, playing on the piano of all these different um, channels, uh, website, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, webinars, local media, institution, radio interviews. So all these different ways to promote this project. Then, of course, um, these, these, are, these points just mentioned are the basis for the promotion uh, and then these uh, successful missions. Huh? So far, um, we had uh, the possibility to carry out 16 missions, six international, six local, four regional, and we are um, constant, constantly um, following through a monitoring system. Uh, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic also affected us um, uh, in the way of doing on-site missions, huh? but remote consultancy were possible in quite a couple of cases, as you see here in these numbers. The last point, I just have to move here a bit so I can see it myself as well. The last point is a medium term um, perspective huh? because we aim to um, hand over in medium term this uh, project to one or different uh, suitable local partners and um, in, in order to have this service really anchored locally. Huh? Of course, our, we have a, a very good knowledge of the institutional landscape uh, uh, in Guatemala, which is essential to be able to, uh, to, to come out with a good selection. But still, I mean, we have to define the organization and the, the criteria for this organization still have to be uh, defined. We are actually in contact with certain local organization and we have uh, during the second part of this month, we will have first two small workshops in order to plan how to approach and how to engage with this local organization. Now let's just have a look at how such a, an organization, a local organization would look like in what we could, could call an ideal world. Huh? So what, uh, what are the requirements of such a sustainable organization? The pillars of such an organization would be one, the local ownership, uh, very important. It would be owned by one or several Guatemalan partners dedicated to support SMEs, of course, one important uh, requirement. A second one is that they are free from particular interests, which mean um, that they are 
locally, sectorally, politically independent, huh? not um, important requirement. Then, of course, the volunteering services as such, that the services are based on volunteering, no honorary is claimed, um, and that an organization is ready to look for um, other kind of sponsorships to cover costs for coordination and marketing. Could be cross finding through other professional services, could be through membership fees, well, different kind of uh, possibilities. And the last one is the, ori the orientation towards small and medium enterprises um, and uh, the demand orientation, uh, very important. So um, this somehow means, as we, as you might know, it doesn't uh, mean that we just uh, promote the existing pool of experts, but we rather uh, go out, look at the market, what is the demand of the SMEs, and then go back and uh, search for a fit with the existing uh, expert pool, or also look for suitable uh, experts locally or in region or in Switzerland. So, so now I stop uh, the sharing of my screen and um, just tell you that Philip Juarez, who is uh, with us, I think he's still with us. I saw him. Uh, before the group discussion, huh? the he is the coordinator of the project in Guatemala, and he has sent a video for today's occasion in which he briefly introduced himself and the project. So we will now split the screen and play the video. Buenos dias a todos. Good morning. Oh, yeah. It's my pleasure to be today with all my colleagues from SIC all over the world joining forces in this event, which is so important for all of us. My name is Philip Juarez Paz, and I am the coordinator for Servicios Expertos de Consultoría, SEC Guatemala. In my position as coordinator for SEC Guatemala, I have a unique possibility to not only benefit SMEs in their performance, but also touch the social fabric of Guatemala by impacting those communities and people that are close to the SMEs, which we are helping to improve their performance. My background is initially in the engineering field. Later, I earned an MBA in management and uh, marketing. And I started transitioning into the management field, and now I'm working with SEC Guatemala. I have been with SEC Guatemala since the last of August 2019, and our work is basically to match SMEs with experts, be them international, regional, or local, to improve their operations and obtain better results. The first challenges of the team was to recruit or initiate recruiting experts, which began in September of 2019. Following this, we started engaging SMEs in the consultancies. This was done mostly from my professional network. The branding process took roughly from October 2019 through January 2020. It took basically five months, and all this time, we were contacting experts and engaging SMEs only through direct contact. It was not until the 27th of February in which we did our media launch and we had a digital marketing and social media strategy in place. The SEC Guatemala project is unique in several ways, mostly because it deals with uh, experts which are regional, international, and locally. Voluntary work in Guatemala is not quite often or very usual. The country has a 60% index of poverty according to the World Bank, so it is not so easy to find experts that are retired and willing to work and donate their time as our Swiss counterparts. However, we do have an interesting number of experts, over 38 now experts, 
that are ranging in the ages between the early 30s and 60s. It's been a very interesting journey, the one of SEC Guatemala in 2020. And even though we have a pandemia still in place, we're very optimistic that we will have interesting results at the year's end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Philip, who is uh, actually present with us um, early morning in Guatemala. So he is the coordinator of this project. And um, yeah, I think it was interesting to hear him directly like that. We will towards the end of the year, I think we will see and be able to analyze a bit more in depth whether this Guatemala model could be part of our future SAT offer as well. Thank you, Philip, again for your for your um, persistence, for your all your work you're doing in Guatemala, and also for the fact that you stood up so early to join us here in the meeting as well. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> So we are coming to the end and I would like to thank you for your participation in today's annual event and for all your contribution in this event, but also in general to what is SEC doing throughout the year. And we would also like to obtain a feedback from you on this event. To do this, we will send you a link afterwards to a survey with, with a request that we'll fill out and send back to you. This is a bit also to know about um, how maybe to improve such an event in a, in a future opportunity. And you will be rewarded, this is important, you will be re rewarded for your participation also with a giveaway. So again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the the gatherings as I did and I hope that you have all a lovely day and hope to see you latest next year and hopefully again for a face-to-face -face annual meeting of the senior expert contact. Thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>